episode of Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Today we have a debate between millennials, a liberal, and a conservative. I have with me Lauren Chen, host of CRTV, roaming millennial uncensored. What does it mean, roaming? Um, that was actually my screen name I started when I first began making videos, and it just had to do with the fact that I moved around so much. Right. So that kind of shaped my perspective of the issues that I talked about. I also have with me Quincy, and he works in the entertainment industry, and he also worked as a behavior therapist. And you are a liberal. Absolutely. Why? Bleeding. Bleeding? Yes, yeah, bleeding What does it mean, bleeding? I, it's just a, a terminology that I often hear from yeah. conservative uh, talking heads. Um, no, I, I grew up conservative Christian. Uh, my family still is. They're Trump supporters. Um, I would attribute my uh, liberalism to growing up on a very diverse cul-de-sac uh, as a kid from the age of seven. Um, I had white neighbors on one side. I had a Vietnamese family on the other side. I had all different uh, religious uh, sects represented on my street, and they all treated me like a son. So um, I just grew up feeling very open. Um, as I got older, uh, moving less to Los Angeles and being exposed to different cultures, different uh, viewpoints of, of, of life, attending different types of churches, from Christian to uh, J Jewish to uh, you know, uh, uh, Jehovah's Witness, I kind of just understood that everyone has their own belief structure and uh, you know, so I, no I tend to be a little bit more open. You're not a Christian anymore? Um, I do not uh, subscribe to, uh, to the Christian religion. I do find value in Christian um, you know, value uh, structures, but I think they're pretty universal. Uh, across the board from all religions, so Amazing. it's not specific to Christianity. And uh, do you know that real men are not liberals? Real men are I've, I've heard I've, I've heard you say that before. Yeah. Um, there's a documentary I would love for you to watch about uh, male masculinity. I think it would uh, open up your viewpoint a little bit more. In what way? Uh, I think you would better understand yourself and you'd probably stop espousing the stuff you say about weak men. Beta! <laughs> are you a beta or conservative? I, I think that's just kind of ridiculous to even but if you are bleeding liberal, you have to be that doesn't beta. make me weak. That doesn't make me weak, actually. Why not? To actually stand for something and not to just go along with the pack actually gives me a lot more strength and um, than just going along with what my party or my um, affiliation represents. And Laura, you are a conservative yes. millennial, right? Yes. And what does it mean to be, have you always been a conservative? Yeah, I mean, from the moment that I began being interested in politics, which, to be honest with you, my parents growing up, they were pretty apolitical, especially we were in Hong Kong and other parts of Asia at the time, so the politics wouldn't have really transferred over to American, the political scene here specifically. But yeah, um, for as long as I've uh, been interested, I've always taken the conservative standpoint. And for me, I think that it's, it's really shaped by the idea of um, personal responsibility. and. That, that idea is really also why I consider myself uh, small government minded. Yeah. Um, I would love to, for everybody to have the ability to, I guess, succeed and you know, be entrepreneurial and things like that. And the US actually has an amazing history and culture of that that we just don't see in other places. Um, so yeah. it's, uh, it's quite a special environment that you guys have here. You, you seem so nice and everything. How do you handle those people yelling at you, those liberal, <laughs> bleeding liberals? <laughs> Yeah. Yelling at you. Um, well, I don't think every liberal is going to yell at people. Um, and for me, it, it's, it's taken, a, I guess, a lot of practice. But I guess um, being able to just separate what, um, what someone is feeling emotionally versus kind of perceiving it always as a personal attack. Because, I mean, these issues, they affect people. So people are passionate about that. I understand that. Um, but at the same time, when someone is able to be respectful and you know, kind of dial it down a little bit, I think that, for the most part, tends to maybe facilitate conversation a little bit more. Uh, but being someone a little bit more quiet, it, it, it is somewhat something that I've had to adjust to, like all of the, the energy surrounding politics. I know you live in Canada, and Canada just legalized the whole country hot. Yes. So you got a bunch of potheads running around. What's that like? Uh, we had them before. I think that's how the <laughs> law got passed in the first place. <laughs> um, personally, it's not going to affect my life at all, uh, my social circle doesn't partake either. Um, I'm very much for 
decriminalizing marijuana. Yeah. I don't think there's a, enough evidence that legalizing it com <laughs> completely would be a good idea. And I mean, for Americans who are looking at Canada, I think you guys have the, the benefit of sort of looking at us as a social experiment. How is this going to affect things? Because- You just ignore it though. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. We, um, we we're do? actually, we have a huge uh, PSA campaign right now trying to educate people more about marijuana use, um, trying to educate people who are underage because while your brain is still developing, developing, it's actually, it's really, really not good to be smoking. Um, and also trying to explain to people that, hey, just because it's legal doesn't mean you can just get in a car and start driving because it still impairs you. So we're in Canada trying to cope with all of that right now. Do you, have you, do you smoke pot? No, I actually have, have never. You've never? No. You smoke pot? Absolutely. I, I'm not surprised. Yeah. And why do you smoke it? Um, most, mostly just uh, for social and then also um, just for uh, personal, personal medical reasons. Personal medical yeah. reasons. Mm -hmm. And do you agree with me that pot destroys the mind and puts you in a state of unconsciousness? You're not at your best. I think you're it actually can be quite enlightening. You're not aware as you are when you're not on pot. Actually, I find myself to be far more aware when I'm on pot than when I'm of sound mind. Really? Yeah. And have you smoked some today? Uh, I have not, but I'm I will, not. I will, it's very I will early partake in the morning. after I leave <laughs> her. You what? I will partake <laughs> after I leave her. Okay. Do you believe human beings are in a fallen state? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it's fallen. I, I think we've consistently just. I think we've always had issues uh, with humanity. Uh, I. I would say that a vast majority of it has to do with religion, and uh, people of power trying to force religion upon people. That has been part of the destabili destabilizing uh, nature of humanity. So. So you blame religion for people I think it being in a fallen state. I think state? it contributes vastly to um, the the instability that we have around the world to our- Do you believe religion does? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Uh, do you agree with that? Um, well, I would definitely agree that humans are in a fallen state, yeah. both as a whole and as individuals. Um, and in regard to how religion plays into that, I think we've seen that if there's one constant throughout history, like one factor that can be true, it's that humans will wage war, humans will be deceitful, humans will try to exploit power. Historically, I think we can't deny, especially when looking at something like the Catholic Church, a lot of people have been more than happy to take up the reign of religion in the name of you know, their own self-interest. But um, I think it's important to be able to uh, separate the concept of religion and the individual or the group's search for truth, search for enlightenment, and the larger power structures that that ends up being formed into, right? Because I think as Christians, we should be um, very aware and cognizant of the fact that, you know, historically, uh, whether it's selling indulgences or um, just the, I guess, seizing, seizing land from indigenous peoples, the church has done, Catholic Church in this case, um, has done a lot of things that weren't very very, very Christ-like, but in, in my opinion, that's not indicative of any and all religions, and it's it's no more the, tr the truth that religion, religious institutions can be bad sometimes than it is that government institutions can be bad sometimes. So do you believe that religion is the solution to the fallen state or the cause of the fallen state? Um, it depends what you mean by religion. Like I, I am a practicing Christian. Um, when I hear the term religion, I often think of something like uh, dogma. To me, religion should be more about a personal relationship with Christ. So if you're asking for the solution to the fallen state of man, then the only one is, is a personal relationship with Christ. Not but a church state, right? The church, uh, theocracy? Like yeah, a, not having government that um, is dictated by one's religious beliefs. Right, I, I'm pro-separation of church and state, but as, as individuals, we absolutely um, that need that connection, which I wouldn't even call religious so much as spiritual, right? Religion, it, it has that overarching theme of authority, which, uh, There's you know, not I'm, one thing this conservative has said that I've disagreed <laughs> with thus far. I just want yeah. to make and note I'm of that. Stunned. Um, so you don't believe that religion is the solution to the fallen state? I believe that Jesus is the solution to the fallen state. Um, um, someone who used to be Catholic and is now a born again Christian, um, when I hear people talk about religion, it often sounds like big government equivalent of church. Um, why does it sound that way? Can I answer why? Is it, is, is it because uh, the liberals, the children of the law have made it that way? <laughs> Why does it sound that way to you as a Christian? It doesn't because, sound that way yeah, to me. Yeah, so because when and we talk about is religion. separation of church and state, because look what has happened. So you don't believe in the Constitution? Look what has happened. It's actually it. not in the Constitution. Right. Um, the principle of uh, separation of church and state is very much so. 
it's in the free, freedom of, uh, in the First Amendment. Uh, it, it's very much so part of what the uh, United States is, is, is founded well, on. Well, the, the, the First we Amendment does say that Congress shall Europe. make no law respecting the establishment uh, of religion, but the, like the phrase spe specific about separation of church right. and state was actually something the, the that was... The foundation of America that was is made up by the children of the separation the of And look what happened when state. they took religion out of government. It went to hell in a handbasket. Well, I, I'm someone who believes that as Christians, we should be very informed by our faith when it comes to who we vote for, what kind of things we support uh, on a variety of issues. Would I support the state legislating, yes, you must be Christian? No, and that's simply because that's not how Christians are made, right? You can't legislate someone into Christianity. So to, to try that would just be uh, unsuccessful. And I think if we look but at- But you should legislate people's personal choices, whether it be marriage and or their gender preference by the state. Oh, Which I actually don't think the government in religious uh, ideology. I actually don't think the government should be involved in marriage at all. I actually don't think it's the the role of the government to recognize social contracts in that way. Um, yeah. America, take note. Like this is what it looks like to be a sensible conservative. Like uh -huh. she's not. Do you feel like something <laughs> is wrong now with what you're saying? Now that he said that, that he um, agrees with you. Why is you, that not the objective? Is you, to get to a place of agreement, or is you, it just about always arguing? Do you feel like, like so, you what be is wrong? it? Um, I, I don't think I would be wrong specifically because someone else is is agreeing with me. But I, as someone who is a small government conservative, I don't think anything I've said is against the principles of small government. Your pre like I and, just have to speak on this. Like your whole premise of what you just said is the whole reason why we have the dysfunction we have in our country now because no one sees value in agreement. And that's what this should be about. It should be about, there's always gonna be polar opposites in every facet of life. So whether you are conservative or you are liberal, there is an in-between point. There is a lot more that we agree upon than we disagree. Should and if we, we uh, and especially people that are in positions that speak to masses of people, such as yourself, the goal should be finding consistency and not just figuratively taking dumps on one side, praising another, and leaving it at that. That should not should be the objective. we agree with you even when you're wrong? Right and wrong is very relative. Like what, what might be right for you may not be right for me. What might be wrong for me may not be <laughs> wrong for you. There is no definitive on what a person chooses to do with their life. If it affects someone in a negative, then we can have that conversation. But if it has no effect such as who I choose to marry, has zero effect on your life, you don't pay any of my bills, we don't sleep together, we are not, in any type of social setting together. So why you would feel the need to support politicians that want to use their faith as a basis of implementing policy that affects my personal life, I don't, I don't agree with that whatsoever. Now, sure, if agree. you don't believe in gay marriage, don't get gay married. If you don't believe in homosexuality, don't have sex with other men. But it is not for you to decide through government and the people you elect to decide what is right for me. Amazing. So should we agree with you when you're wrong? No, you should state your case, back it up with something, and then we can have that conversation. But we should not There's certain things we're never gonna agree upon, and I'm okay with not, that. We should not agree with you when you're wrong, right? That's, that would be asinine. If you don't, if you don't genuinely agree with something, right. then you say- Well, I, well that's you know, what I, we do. The Christians don't agree with you when you're wrong. And you people get mad. But that's fine. Leave it for yourself. You, you don't have to have a public debate about it. You get mad and angry and we, because we don't right, because agree. Right, because it, it, leads, it leads to people being, their livelihoods being um, oppressed. There are real life consequences for the things that people espouse out of their mouth. Well, their real lives affected by it. Up into death. There are kids killing themselves currently. There are transgender people being murdered wow. by men who have not come to terms with their own sexuality, who are married to women but go seek sex elsewhere. What does who, it have to do with Who have Christians? so much hate and uh, fear in their own hearts that that's they are willing true. to take the life of another person. No, they have committed suicide because they're wrong? No, and that's, they know that that's, they're absolutely, wrong. that's absolutely and, and they have a lot of guilt about being wrong? That is, that's why as, they need as a, Christians as to a show gay them, man, that is absolutely that's false. That's why they need Christians to show them no, how to overcome trust me, that. I sat in the church, I used to go to church with my boyfriend. Are you homosexual? So we sat and we cried and we praised hallelujah, just like you do. You're homosexual? Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, I'm actually bisexual, I still enjoy uh, women oh, yeah. on occasion, yeah. So isn't that why People in a fallen state need I'm Christianity. I'm not fallen. I'm actually much more enlightened than you are. So, so that they can see how to overcome that lifestyle or whatever it may There's be. There's nothing to overcome. Now, don't they need Christian 
Christ, to you should reconcile while you have on, such an issue Hold with homosexuality. Well, I think, I think I, something I that Christians sin. need to realize is that in, you know, That's when Christians, out, when Christians talk about like, oh, like this lifestyle is sinful, this whatever, I think people get the impression that Christians think they're living a perfect lifestyle and that everyone else needs Jesus, but they don't because they're so perfect, which is actually exactly not what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are all equally before the Lord fallen. Right, and that means that everybody, I don't care if you're a pastor, I don't care if, if you're a drug addict on the street, we all need him the same amount, which is a heck of a lot. So I think when Christians are approaching people, we need to realize that we can't legislate them into behaving the way we should, and nor would we want to, because that's not, that's I not how, <laughs> that's, not, that's not what Christ wants. That's, that's compulsion, that's not act of service, because you love somebody. Like we should be willing to follow Christ because we love him, right? Well, what so, Ash I'm sorry. No, no, sorry, go, go ahead. I was gonna say what actually be no, more courageous and demonstrate let me strength. just ask this question. Yes, absolutely. So do you agree with me that people who are in a fallen state need Christianity <laughs> yeah, but that's, to that's show them everybody. how to overcome it? So that's, we're accepting the premise that people are in a fallen state? They are. Okay. Until they because overcome you say it. So. Until they overcome it. But let me ask, do you agree with me that people who are in a fallen state need Christianity so that they can show them how to overcome it? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's true about everybody that's that's regardless of but, your lifestyle but for people in particularly who are in a fallen yeah but state, in in particularly is not what the bible says right it is the bible, not but for that's you what to, talk, to, that's to, what the to help me to overcome that's what anything the i don't is about. i don't help it, cheating men overcome their, their cheating ways well, i know you don't cause like you're in a fallen it has state, nothing to man. do with my it has nothing to do with me i know hold so on. why do you feel i'm gonna come to you i'm gonna come to you please well <laughs> I something, get to, something that so i, I want to restate the question sure do you agree with me that this is why christianity is so important to help those who are in a fallen state overcome <laughs> christianity is important for everybody to overcome their own sins and there's actually something that i took from my my time as you know growing up catholic is uh i have sinned in in my in my words, what I failed to, what I have done, and what I have failed to do. So, you know, this whole idea of like this lifestyle specifically is sinful. Everything that that we do, like the the unkindness in our hearts, the judgmental attitudes in our hearts, that's all something that needs to be addressed. So, I and think when we go up to specific people and saying like you are living the sinful lifestyle, you're the one that needs Jesus, it downplays the fact that we all do. And so, well, we're, our restate, job as Christians is not to go up to people and say this is bad, what you're doing is bad. It's to say, hey fellow sinner who, with whom I, I share faults with, Lauren, this is how Do you we disagree can, with her, Lauren, a fellow me, conservative? Let me re, I'm black and slow, so let me restate the, wow. the question. Um, do, Why do you hate black people so do much? Do you agree with me that because people are in a fallen state, <laughs> they, they need Christianity to show them how to overcome the fallen Just state? Just tell do him you, no, because it's Do absurd. you agree with me on that? Um, no, she doesn't. I, I'm, as far awesome. as I'm understanding your question is that does, do we need Christianity? She just yes, thoroughly explained. We, we, thoroughly do explained we need Christianity? Yes, we all need. So people who are in, fallen, in the fallen state need Christianity. I.e. everybody. So that they can overcome. Yeah, everybody. Okay. Well, I said people. I asked the people who are in a fallen state. Right, which is because everybody. Because not all children so for, of God. <sighs> Children of God are not in a fallen state. Right, agree? because we have so, that Christianity. Oh, a lot of not people because, go to church every Sunday and not are because so, we're perfect. Are so hate filled. Like, what is Jesus doing for those folks? I don't understand. Because I, I guarantee, if you were to come back, he would rec not recognize the church as at its present state. And if he waited, I agree all, to that. if he waited after all these centuries for this group of folk, you know why he would not recognize the church today? Because because it's, you guys it's do not represent him. by beta males. If he does exist, beta, you don't represent him. Do you agree? You're uh, too So, much. Lauren, as a son of daughter of God, are you still in a fallen state? I'm, I'm not as so long as that I'm able to accept the atonement, right? And that's the thing. Like, I feel like perhaps you're trying to equate Christianity with works, but we know that it is not by works that we are saved, right? So um, we really do need to place all of our faith in Jesus. If by, you know, fellowship with him, we become more Christ-like in our actions toward others, toward our church, that is a good thing, but that is not the... The, the judgment that we should be judging Christians on. It's like, oh, you're, you're acting good, therefore you are a Christian, you're acting like this, therefore I think you're not a Christian and fallen. We are all in that fallen state. So it's, men and women who are sons and daughters of God, are they still in a fallen state? If they are sons and daughters of God, they're no, that because, because they have that, that relationship and that communion with Christ. So they're not in a fallen state once they become sons and daughters of God. In so far as they accept the atonement. All right. I don't know what that, what that means, atonement. Christ's atonement. What does that mean exactly? Um, John 3, 16. So God so loved the world that he sent his son, 
that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And so once you do that, you're no longer in a fallen state because now you're a son and daughter of God, right? And at that well, point, you're, you're starting your you journey have, on living a more Christian life. At that point, do you Christian have life? A, a responsibility, a it's duty not automatic. to be an example for those who are still in a fallen state to see the way out? Well, I think our, our duty at that point is to share the gospel, the good news that Christ loves you. And if you are, you know, willing to accept that communion with him, then you, you can be, become part of that family. But our, our, our job is... You can is, overcome that fallen state? Right. Oh, okay. You agree with I that? Would, absolutely not. I don't why even not? accept your premise, so no. Why do you don't agree with that, that once you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you can overcome that Because for state. someone else, it might be accepting a, a completely different deity. That's not but what's that really relevant. What's relevant them. is what type of person you are while you exist on this, on this earth. That's what's relevant. And if your Christianity leads you to be a good person with, uh, you know, love and acceptance for humanity. Can you be then, good then, without ha believing in, absolutely, in Christ? Absolutely. And do you, what do you say about that? Um, I, I mean, if we're talking about the state of the individual, then I believe we're all perfect. None of us is like, you know, truly good. But can people who are atheists be kind and compassionate toward other people? Yes. Can you be good without believing in Jesus Christ? Are you saying then that there are no good Jews then? Like, what are you saying? Lauren, can it's you because be they're not Christians, good they're not without good. believing in Jesus Christ? We cannot be perfect without believing in Jesus Christ, no. And we're never going to, uh, we're not going to ever achieve perfection. Uh, on our own, yeah. Through Jesus absolutely or not. How about, can you can. be good without believing in Jesus Christ? We can do good acts. Can you be good without believing in Jesus Christ? Yes, yeah, so I, I feel like you do, <laughs> he's what your just statement. He's you down until you tell him yes. Because he's, he just gave this impression to the audience that you can be good without believing in Jesus by believing in some other identity Let me, so or then right? you, So now are you saying you learn, that do you agree if with you that, do not believe in Jesus, you are without, not capable of being a good person? Is that what you're... I'll respond to it in a minute, but let me get my... Well, I don't be, that's the thing. Like, I don't believe any of us is like, can truly and blamelessly, flawlessly call ourselves a good person. Oh, I'm a great can, person. Can individuals do good things regardless of their faith? Yes, but well, as Christians, should we... Well, you can be good without believing in Jesus. Do you agree with that? I think you can be as good a person without believing in Jesus as you can with it, but that's not the standard we are called to. We are called to perfection, and as humans, we cannot achieve that without Christ. You cannot be good without Christ. No. Well, oh, yeah. in the sense of perfection, <laughs> right? Like, the word good is so, like, if I give someone charity, I'm being good in that moment, right? That's Not necessarily, because you can give to a person and it's the wrong time to give. You could corrupt them or spoil them or make you, them work. You are, like black people depend on the welfare, right? Right, but I, I that, they well, give, but you are not so. Up there. But I, I, I feel like if you know when <laughs> you you tell atheists that they you know, they can't be good without Christ, what they're thinking is, or what they interpret that as, is that um, you know they they can't love their family because they're Christian. That their relationships with their friends means less because they're Christians. Which let me, is um, not, let me, please please let me interject. Okay. So. Um, for a Christian mother and father to abandon the child, I'm going to just stick with the homosexuality thing since we're on the topic. But there's more. No, 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 no. Than homosexuality. Is it a, is, just answer this question for me. A Christian parent who disowns their child, are they, are, is that a good act? Is that something that God would show reverence to? Uh, a a An Christian applaud? parent would not do that. I see it every day. But those are not real Christian parents. They may be Christian uh, well, in name. And we can set. go down the list. Uh, and this they is be, the hypocrisy they, they of may Christianity. Be Christian in name the hypocrisy set. of conservatism that most liberals object to. Which Let is me answer the question. Yes, continue. They might be uh, Christian in namesake, but they're not true sons like Trump? and daughters of God. Like Donald Trump. What about Trump? Like most Republicans in power. What, Christians what by namesake because it's convenient. I would probably agree with that. Most Republicans are probably not actually Christians. Right. Like, yeah, they're, they're they're could be at they're a doing name it because but it's politically not, convenient. But half the population will go vote for them regardless to what they actually stand for. So let me because just, they're not free thinkers. Let me just, they're stuck. Amazing. Like yourself. Let me just not say, open to uh, actually receiving new information let me just to, say for to your, have a different thought. Let me tell you this so you know. Yeah. There's no way on earth or heaven that you can be good without God. You can it's hold on impossible. to that ridiculous belief. And God you, is the so only true to. God. There are imitations out there Actually, who are pretending to be Christianity is an imitation. There are far uh, more only religions God, only that predate God. Christianity no that have good. the same exact, same exact no stories. No man is good. Same exact Am stories. Am I right about that? No, no man. If you're going to say you're a Christian, at least know where Christianity 
stem cell. Am I right about that? That no, but no you don't human, know human being is good, right? Yeah, but um, actually, you what agree with that? what I find interesting about Christianity is that, like you said, these are stories that are actually not exclusive to They're Christianity. Not. If we talk about the the idea of resurrection, the idea of atonement, I believe these are themes that are universal. Which is based and in astrology. Well, I mean, I think it speaks to the fact that they're uni they're universal, they're eternal, and it's I, I, stars that are universal. in, in the my Bible opinion, says kind of the stars will serve enhances signs. their their importance. Continue, yes. Right, where like the this is the need for atonement is something that human beings have been talking about for for millennia. I think it's because we we recognize the fact that we are imperfect and we we have been searching for that that answer that solution for as long as we've been around. My real issue with Christianity is that it by default teaches people to not be accountable for their, their own lives. That's not true. When it is very true. It's not I true. lived I grew up in the church. Trust me, I, I know what but I'm talking about. That's not true. It's very true. You had a bad church, but that's no, no, not no, true. No, no, no. No, no, no. Christianity, no, no, no. as a matter of fact, Christianity is the only religion that says that you must repent. You Believers have to admit that do not take I know accountability no other, for their actions and I know no behavior. other religion that does that. Now, you are, you are, There's a lot that the Republican Party, and Donald Trump especially, needs to repent for. That's never going to happen. The Republican Party is not Christianity. It's a political it's, party. It, that represents... Isn't your whole, your, your, your whole uh, premise of your beginning statements where whether or not, um, in essence, the nation should be a Christian state. It is that a Christian, Christian nation. It, it, it's not. It it's is. A, it, no, it's the not. The people, see, you are basing it on there, the people. There may be a majority of Christians. You can't judge Christianity based on the people. And I, I, well, yeah, in my you opinion, I see. You judge Christianity based on the people that practice it? Right. I would see Christianity as a philosophy and as a theology, but Christianity is also a culture and community. In my opinion, I think it is important to separate that. Just what like when I talk about. I don't understand your logic, like how you formulate <laughs> your thoughts. I don't get it. I'm telling you the truth. No, you're just making blanket statements as if they're fact. And no, they are. You're not giving any type of context to what you're saying. Well, what is it that you don't understand? Continue. Um, yeah, so I, I think like there are absolutely fair criticisms to be made of Christians, and I think um, when when Christians read the Bible, they they often like to pick and choose what they put their emphasis on. Um, if I would hear Christians spending at least you know one tenth of the time uh, that we talk about, I don't know something like. Uh, for example, gay marriage, as we did something like uh, gluttony, something like sh selfishness, something uh, like f failing to be a modest or failing to be modest, then I think that like because the, the Bible doesn't rank sins like like the way that we do right now. And I, so I think the, the fact that Christians like to make themselves, well, OK, I'm going to talk about this because this is what I think is most important. Therefore, it's what God thinks is most important. That's inaccurate. I, I Can wanna, we talk about policy as it relates to, to, to something to, else, But let me just ask. If radical homosexuals were not imposing themselves upon radical society homosexuals. What is and that? upon Christians, would Christians be fighting back in such a big way? It's not like the Christians are looking for them. The radical homosexuals are going after the Christians and trying to change the church, and, you know, bring their secular ideas into the church, into families. And so you have Christians By asking Christians back. to do what Jesus and asked so of them, which was to if, love thy brethren you regardless to, to, that. regardless to Hold on. what their... Question. Question. Per, yeah, continue. And so if radical homosexuals were not imposing on Christians, would there be this big battle going on? Lauren first and then you. Yeah, I mean, I think... <laughs> You know, it, it's fair to say that, hey, what if what if some of this is self-defense? We feel like we're being attacked, and so we need to... And yeah, I'm not against uh, Christian activism in any way, but I think it's important that we don't we don't let ourselves become wrapped up in like political debates as Christians to the point where we overlook the, the larger, broader message of the gospel. So you agree, then, that the radical homosexuals are imposing on families, Christian families, they want to change the order of the family, want what, which, to impose which, which, it on which, children to be accepting of their, 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 their gay sons and daughters. And like that. that's a, and that's, so you don't see gluttony what an encroachment upon, <laughs> upon your life. Well, let's, anyone, let's, let's, right? let's be, more, let's, let's, let's let's be more specific here. Like, what, what policies specifically are you talking about? Because any, any regulations where, um, you know, they would be able to, like, go into a Christian school and say you must do that, I, I, I oppose that. I am very strongly for freedom of religion. And if, if freedom of religion is being attacked, of course, as Christians, you we should, should speak act, act about it. I, I think in some ways it is. Uh, but, like, again, that can't get in the way of our larger, um, I guess, our, large, our larger mission of proselytizing. So should that's I feel attacked if important. I'm going to the subway and there's, you know, Christians espousing their gospel on megaphones? Like, should I feel attacked no. by, the, by their actions? No. 
So it's just because simply they have speaking, the freedom and, to and do that. exactly. So, but, but on the flip, you're gonna say that radical homosexuals are attacking straight people. They are. Because we're speaking up for ourselves. No, you're trying to impose it. You're no, not. No, it's not important. What is that? Homosexual there's a difference marriage. between Same there's a marriage. difference between stepping up and saying, "Hey, I'm a homosexual, and I'm worthy of love." But no one cares. Obviously, you do because no, we're still having this conversation. But if you didn't impose it on no, the Christians, okay. they would go about their lives. That's you would absolutely go about not true. Homosexual That's marriage, absolutely not true. Because you you it's impose that up on the course. You try to force Christians to accept that. Rather just in the same way that black people forced thing, themselves upon married, white people no because cares. they spoke up about so having I, rights in this country? So what? Repeat that. What I said was, so is that the same as stating that black people were imposing upon white people what when, we, black have to do when, with we up, when we set up for our rights what does that have? That has, in this country? That's not the same conversation. It is, ac it is actually the no, exact same conversation. Homosexuality is not about civil rights. It's not about love. It's not about what, family. What, it's define about civil sex. rights. Define civil rights. It's, it's not sex. about sex. That's where you're mistaken. No, I'm not. You can never speak you on it because you're not a homosexual man. It's about sex. You can never speak well, on I it mean, because you're not a homosexual the, man. The, the, and this is the, my Can you accept that, that? Hold on. The thing that made a lesbian a lesbian is that a female has sex with another lesbian well, female. Well, sexual what preferences makes a homosexual are about sexual homosexual. preference, but because if I can it, if no, I can interject my small government sex, viewpoint in this, Isn't it um, about the reason sex? why I understand the the whole gay marriage debate is that uh, I I don't believe again the government should be involved in marriage at all. But because it is, there are a lot of other things that relate to the marriage contract, as it were, um, that that's all come outside is. that come outside of like love is love, whatever. Like marriage contracts are about government recognition of, of a relationship. And that can affect your inheritance, that can affect uh, hospital times, that you're allowed to visit each it's other, that can affect. Yes, it, it no, can affect. You can, write a per you can write a contract to say, when I die, I want Lou er Ella to get all my stuff. Yeah, if you're someone when who I'm actually has a will, and if I you actually have a will, care, but, it, but it's not automatic, hospital, right? That's why marriage hospital. exists uh, from, from the government, when right? When I'm in the hospital, I need Same hospital Same with like health care. If you want to bring someone saying, on your health care. they don't care. need a law for that. They can write a contract. And can you, you uh, give me your or, definition or, of a civil right? Or, what, or, what, what let me, I want to go quickly back to this yeah. trouble. I mean, this question. Do you agree with me that what makes a man or a woman a lesbian or a homosexual is that well, they have sex with the same sex. Sexual if, preferences are about sexual preferences. Right. Yeah, I think and we would all agree love, on that. And it's not about love, it's not about family, and it's not about civil rights. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, I mean, no. Because the, the Greeks actually have several different types of, of love, one of them being specific to uh, like romantic love, eros. And that is something that would, like, yeah, so the, the gay relationships are based they around that type of... They teach this in liberal schools. And where are the Greeks now? The Greeks? Who did you say? The, the the Greeks in general, just, just the different different types of love. Where are so they now? They're yes, still because they embraced country. homosexuality. Their civilization went to hell. Yeah. I rest my Got case. Yeah. I rest my so, case. So guess what? So well. then America is on so a decline to going straight to hell. Then right. So what? Based on your, so then America is on its way straight to hell. Then. Not well, now. no, but I, I'm trying what to explain why the whole gay marriage have debate. Have taken if, over. If have government is not? going to be in marriage, you can't turn on the TV without seeing one. Repeat that. I'm saying, well, that based on what you're saying, then uh, America is basically going straight to hell because you can't turn on the TV without seeing, you know, the influence of gay people. But that's starting to so change. So if the if if America has that's embraced homosexuality, now. if they could fight in our military, uh, which they didn't destroy, like liberal, I'm sorry, as conservatives said that it would, uh, gays who have gotten married uh, hasn't destroyed and corrupted the family. It's actually improved and made families much better. And you should thank us, uh, straight people, for adopting the children that you guys give up. No, that's not uh, a good idea. No, it's a great idea because no, someone not. has to take uh -uh. care of them. No, someone no, has no. to show them that's love. That's a bad idea. No, it's, it's actually think, a great idea. Do you think radical great homosexuals to be, should be able to adopt? Absolutely. Um, I think that the There's not enough straight people to, to, take a, to, to take care of all those kids. Do so, you yeah. think they should adopt? I think that uh, a Couple should be able to adopt if they no, if no, they we're not hang on. About a I think I we're think two about people should be able to. She's not the kind to, of conservative you're looking for. So. I yeah. think I yeah. think two people should be able to adopt <laughs> if they demonstrate the things that psychologists have no, de for decades. Hang on, I know, but I'm I'm, I'm answering the question. Psychologists are liberals. Well, you're such a nice lady. Why don't you answer my question? Don't be like him. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I don't because do the premise of radical. Are you a Christian? Because the premise of radical homosexuality, like I I don't know what that means to you. He doesn't know what it means either. Right. Amazing. Right, but I, I if, Amazing. I think it's our I think it's our job as as Christians to take children in and I don't think a Catholic <laughs> I didn't church ask about should Christians, I say radical homosexuals. Right, but I don't know what that means to you. Those that impose their lifestyle on Christians. 
Can you give any the, examples as to how, like, any anecdotes to how radical gays impose on straight people? Same-sex marriage. Um, is they, that not two people decided for themselves? They want to teach it in the school. How does that impose to, on I'm, I'm anyone sitting in this room? I'm asking a question. They now, I'm actually against when it comes to schools. I don't think there should be these discussions um, for, for, for young children. I'm very much against that, I think, in a lot of ways. Why? Young children know? Young do, children know. Do they, do they know the, the... And if they had parents that actually fostered uh, acceptance and tolerance, then they would come out much sooner. They wouldn't right, have to be I, 25 years old, twice divorced with five kids. Teaching to it then in be the like, schools because I don't I believe that it would time. be This is why she against uh, teaching in school. Yeah, I, I don't think it would be taught in a way that is, you know, fostering of merely just acceptance and openness and tolerance and love, which are Christian values that I would support for anybody. It's not, a, as Christians, it's not up to us to say you are, you are not deserving of our love, right? So that, it, you know, if that's about what it is, then I'd be fine. I, I believe that parents should take it upon themselves to teach their children that for anybody. That way, you know, regardless of the race, religion, whatever, we don't have people who are just totally awful to, you know, their, their fellow man. That's, that's important. But when it comes to specifically what we teach in school, I think that there are political ideologies that are taking over to the point that it goes beyond, like, what is just acceptance and love. And I worry that we are introducing certain concepts to kids when they are too young to understand it. Like the issue of transgenderism, for example. Um, gender dysphoria is a medically recognized, medically recognized thing that some people go through. Um, Do you believe that? What? What she just stated. Are you saying that? Gender dysphoria is Meaning that is a mental illness that needs to be dealt with? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we could call it uh, that, yeah. I mean, a obviously. Mental illness. Yeah, I agree with you. It is a mental illness. Right, and there, we should, so if someone's experiencing that, then obviously, like, as their brothers and sisters, families and friends, we need to be there to support them, et cetera. Meaning, um, meaning not support them and in, in accepting it as a norm, but to show them how to overcome it, right? Right, Lauren? Well, I mean, I'm, when it comes to, Lauren, okay, so the thing- what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, what you gender like, dysphoria- Sir, your Christianity is- Sir, in, do you recognize you, that you got in me all of the existence of humanity, that gays on, have always existed, that transgender people Wait, always existed? Let me, let me ask yeah. you this. There's been you, nothing on, that has ever on. changed that. And you can pray and wish hold it away on. all you want to. Hold it's on, not going to change. Do you, so the do you better thing to do for society man, is to accept it. Do you believe that the brain of a man and the brain of a woman is different? Yes. I very much believe that the brain of a man and the brain of a woman is different. Therefore, I am open to the idea that because of some like a medical mishap, that there's it's not mis medical. why does it have to be a mishap? It's well, because, because God it, makes because no it, mistakes. Because every, it deviates from the norm in the same way that, that polio is a mishap, or the same way that it's deviating from deviating from the norm and the people who go through this it's it's very hard for them it's it's something that uh you know if, if has driven people to medications and to surgery so i think it's fair to say and this is not a normative you're a bad person thing but it's it's not the norm right but that doesn't make it uh wrong no. it doesn't make it if it's not normal it's wrong invaluable. but do would you say autism is wrong he yes. would hmm you are okay, but it's a, you can, it's but an you can normal situation, right? But so it's abnormal, wrong. yeah. But wrong is a normative like form of judgment. But it, it's abnormal, obvious. Are you at all open to thinking a different thought about that? Because like I work with the autism population. I do too. You shouldn't be. What? <laughs> you okay, shouldn't but, be. But back to the issue. Why not? Back to the issue of transgender. You just communicated via your, your but I believe multiple they platforms can it. that. It is not something to overcome. Learning skills, like we all need to learn skills to get a, along in this world that it's we live in. It's just another trauma that you can overcome. You can, over Lauren, do you believe that all things are possible through Christ? You can overcome anything. Including Lauren, your ignorance? Lauren, can you, can you overcome, overcome anything ignorance? through Christ? I don't think you can o overcome Because I'm going to be praying that God gives you some revelation about the, some Like Christ, Christ doesn't promise us perfect health. Christ doesn't promise us a perfect body. What Christ promises us is redemption and salvation, which I believe is possible. But he's not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not a magic genie where we can you know, just say, hey, like, uh, I, I'm missing an arm. I, I need an arm because that's not, a, that's not something we're requesting through him out of our love and service to him. That's something that we're requesting for ourselves. you can overcome all things through Christ? Uh, not yeah, but not if we're not talking about all, like all things. We're talking about autism but, but specifically. All things, it, it's all things. 
a person so who learns to function. I, I just want to hold on one minute. I don't want to you because I want to ask you about the great white hope. I don't think we the have autism the right doesn't to ask just Christ disappear. To overcome they just learn autism. Skills. Autism so isn't as, something to be overcome. So as a it's Christian, not. It's not something to be overcome. It's something that some people have, but it's it's like I mean. That's like saying, so like, can Lauren, I need to yes overcome no. me yes no. my As shortness Christian, through Christ? Do you believe she's not your type of Christian, sir? She's the type of Christian I actually applaud and have respect for. Does that make you nervous to hear that? No, sh it shouldn't. I what? will rush back in my prayer closet. No, your what? prayer closet. Oh Lord, if this guy is your prayer closet is doing well, nothing what, what, what for you, I sir. What have I said that's uh, against respect. against the, the good news? Let me go for back example. to it. Specifically, Let me go back what happened? You was you put so much toxic stuff out there that like trust me, trust me. If Jesus did come back. You were not going to be going along for the ride with him. Jesus is here already. Nah. Are you, do you like, this is, so these are serious, Lauren. serious topics, and you, and you just, like, throw out these remarks for a laugh, like. Lauren, let me Yeah, ask. but like that, what you're, what you you're saying sounds a lot like the prosperity things, gospel. Do you, do you believe that we can overcome all things for those who believe in Christ? Is it possible to overcome all things if you believe in God? Yeah, anything that we are capable in. Anything that we could overcome, we can overcome Lauren, through Christ. But I am you, answering the question. Jesus is not your genie. Jesus is not something you can just, you know, hey, oh, uh, I don't want the autism. your scapegoat to justify the awful things that so-called Christian, Christian people do. Person. Do you believe, for those who believe in God, you can overcome all things? Give me a yes or no. Simple yes or no so I can move on. Can you overcome for your those prejudice who believe of black in people? God, do you believe that do you, you can pray to ask God to enlighten you things? about what it is to be black in America? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say that Christ will allow us to become, to heal autism. No, it's not something not, to I be didn't healed. Answer about that. Yeah, I'm but not, that's my answer and I'm leaving it at no, that. I've answered about plenty. Autism. I'm not going to, no. As a she thinks you're about God. as ridiculous as I think. Like it's Isn't that true? it's really sad. Like, I think I, what you're saying is ridiculous in regard to autism. All I came on the show Christ. to to see for myself and I think the, if the, like you really genuinely like believe what you espouse. If you at all cared about actually like civic dialogue and actually so, like having a real conversation, but it's very clear to me that all you care about is espousing your twisted views. <laughs> to as many people that will pay attention to you. Amazing. And it's really sad. Let me ask you about to, The fact that you get invited to important panels to discuss important topics, it's really like, it's really sad state of affairs that we find ourselves in. If I agree with you, would it still be sad? It's not about you agreeing. It's about you having a willingness to have an actual conversation and to be able to, you can't, you can't have a debate, a so-called debate, and not be willing to, to walk away thinking something that you didn't go in there thinking. If I agree with you, if you with only go in there to try to prove that what your stance is is the right stance, then we get nowhere. But my which is why we is have the right, polarization that we have now. This is the right way because you it's are, the way of God. You are very exemplary of that. So let me ask: If I agree with so you, so do you? Do you? Would it make what are sense? you doing to help your your viewers get out of this rut of being stuck in beliefs that, for better or worse, are leading to a lot of destruction in the world? I, I, I don't see that happening. Well, you're, the you're not paying way attention. I see, there are people who uh, they have fear, you just they have you doubt. let out of your mouth that a young child who hangs himself in their ba in their bathroom or their bedroom cl uh, closet is doing so because they have some revelation that the life that they're living, which they're not even living yet, uh, that they're so stricken with uh, you know ill feelings about themselves that. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that that child doesn't feel loved and accepted. That's period. Not true. It is very well, true. Not, you can't. Is, do you know you, anyone me, that's committed to let me committed respond. suicide? Yeah, for I deal being with gay? them all the time. But let me tell you, you this: in what capacity me, to condemn them? No, let me tell you this, man. Be quiet. You're not doing it to Hold be helpful. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, what it is when you're in a fallen state, you have guilt because you're separated from God, and in that guilt, you tend to judge yourself. And, and you open up the room for Satan to come in and to, see, to, to deceive you. You know what? Your life is not worth anything. You're a homosexual or you're drunk or you're an alcoholic or you're whatever, right? And so he convinced you to take your own life because you're judging yourself in that fallen state because you're wrong. You're separated from God. Wait, can we... Do uh, you accept that? I think we need to bring, let's bring science into this a little bit in regard to transgenderism, right? There, there have been actual studies done that look at the amount of gray versus white matter, which is one of the sex differences that manifests itself in, in our brains, um, of people who identify as transgender and people who, I guess, yeah, are, are cisgender. They've actually found that there are some differences in the brains, the, the neurology of people who are transgender. Now, what that means to me is that, you know, 
like, like I think we both agreed on, I have a female brain. What were to happen if there was a brain that was constructed like my own, but in the body of a male? That's, I think, what some people are attributing to transgenderism. And it, and it happens throughout multiple species. Right, and, and so what, what this means then is that in people who are transgender, they've also found things like an increased rate of suicide. I think it's about 45%. And there's also been an increased diagnosis of things like de depression and, and uh, other issues like that. Now, there have been studies done that look at um, you know, rates of suicide pre and post op, whether that changes. They've also done studies that look at um, the kind of environments that they have, whether the trans individual um, feels like they are comfortable, secure, maybe passing, and how that affects the way that they, um, you know, whether or not they, they would uh, attempt to commit because suicide. If you're more on the end of passing, you're going to be more accepted in society. Right. And so they've, they've, they've so done studies like that. I believe that. Like I believe that. that. And, the, and the reason that that is because when you're in that father state, you're separated from the tree of life I again. And so to be in sin like that, they call it sin, but the father state, it affects everything about you. Right, but it I think we, we, we both, think, we both agreed you. that it was a medical illness. Do you think a medical illness a medical can illness. be... So I mean, you're, you're saying that gender dysphoria is not a medical illness Christians now. have I've, tried opposing it for, for all of this time. Why don't, they try, do this. why don't they try a new tactic and try actually accepting it? No, you and should let's never see what we, And let's see what humanity looks like then. You should never accept evil. <laughs> But do, do, do you understand you, what I'm saying? Something, so you, you don't think gender dysphoria is, is a medical condition? Because in my mind, something can either be a medical condition, which is diagnosable, treatable, and... That, it's, that's all irrelevant when, it, when you're dealing with religious zealots. Like, it doesn't matter what science says about am it. Because they just think that they're all uh, am I a zealot? liberals anyway. Are you calling me a zealot? I'm speaking for people that have no, similar are you calling me a religious zealot? You. I think so. And now... A word from our sponsor. The Father State has new merchandise available. Every purchase goes right back to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mama Mia, all I, uh, 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 peace to y'all. Get off that stage, boy. Quit monkeying around. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. It's amazing. So Donald Trump, the great white hope. Why do you call him that? <laughs> he's orange. <laughs> and he's great. And he's white, yes. Right. He is a white, conservative, Christian man of power. Christian, um, he's never. Did you vote for the president? That's, I, absolutely not. Did you? Oh, no, I'm you can't, you can't. Uh, do you support, um, do you support or resist President Trump? Resist? Trump and the conservative Republicans that support him. Why? Uh, my main reason for uh, opposing Trump, and I haven't always disliked Trump, for the record. Um, he does not fit in at all into the framework of my morality. I which, agree. Which is not 100%. Yeah, Thank God. No, no. Um, he's a vile individual. He's corrupt. Um, we don't have time to go through the litany of uh, reasons why, but he is not deserving of the presidency of the United States. Even though you don't live in the United States, do you support or, or resist the president? I think overall I support him. That's not to say that I like every tweet he sends out. It's definitely unchristian to call somebody horse face. I think that goes why without that? saying. Because it's... He is a porn person. And um, she, what yeah, she slept she's with. not an honest person at all. Of whom yeah, he slept but with. It, it's not Christian to name call. We can, we can say, ugh, I don't even, yeah. I, I mean, we, we can say, like, is, I don't think this, this lifestyle is conducive to walking with Christ. But that's but very, a, that's man, a very so different thing Trump. than calling someone horse face. And as Christians, I think we're, we're called to spread the message with love, right? Anytime we, we talk about, um, you know, someone's behavior not being good for them, it should be because we love them, because we are concerned for them and, and want them to, I guess, li live right with God and with themselves, with their neighbors. That's not calling somebody horse face. That's not done with love. That's well, you're not going to ever be able to accept Christ then. By not he calling someone horse Trump. face? He called them liars and dogs. You can call someone a liar. Of, That's bag I mean, of bones. He called them a dog and bag of bones, uh, hypocrites. Sons, you're talking about uh, Jesus children. Christ himself? Yeah, he called them that. Children of the devil, 
So yeah, how but that's that's condemning sin, that, which I think we should. Say that Trump, we should Trump condemn. Wrong, we should condemn sin, that, but that's a different thing than calling so someone horse face. He he didn't he didn't condemn worse. her for her sin. He which condemned is, her because he sued. Because she sued she's him. speaking out so right? of the fact Trump that when, when did he dog? Would you have to that? No, because he's calling her a dog for political reasons, not because he disagrees with her lifestyle, which he clearly doesn't, because I don't think but he's Christ living a Christian call, lifestyle. Because he never talked about Christianity until he was running for president. Can we just president. keep Christ out? Because like, you like I'm the, I'm he the non-believer defending name. Jesus. Well, because like, Christ was condemning our behavior, A and B. Like he was doing so that. He's not. He's not condemning her behavior because she's it's a unchristian. Porn star. Yeah, but he's condemning her behavior because. She, she she tried to sue him, right? There's there's a very different well, it's a very different thing. Nice. That's why the children of the law are winning because of nice religion. Yeah, but like That's what 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 have religion. what have I said that is like pro sin or anti Jesus? Because I'm not pro sin so, and I'm not anti Jesus. But right? your religion but, is so what's nice. the, what would be the end game for you? What does so that let look me like? Ask you this. If if Christians won, what what would that look like? Wait, like, can, um, can in I answer about terms? Trump? Yes. Okay, so specifically about Trump, um, I, I support deregulation, right? So small government, I appreciate that he's rolled back regulations on small business. No matter I, what the consequences of those deregulations are. But actually, when it comes to something like black entrepreneurship, it's actually up. Uh, I think it's 400 yeah. percent. Don't quote me on that. Exactly. No, it's high, like, that's higher like, than ever. Right, higher than ever. And when it comes to something like unemployment, lower than ever, yeah. uh, e even among uh, groups like women, Hispanics, and, and yes. black people. And I think that's actually really important. I think a lot of these social issues that conservatives love to talk talk about, we often don't talk enough about the root causes of them. And poverty is a huge contributor to things like crime, um, even things like drug use. So uh, I think these these kinds of policies are actually going to be good, even better in the long term, because we're going to see like a, I guess, a domino effect. People are less desperate. They, they're not yeah, being pushed right. as much, right? So How that's a good thing. And I also appreciate the fact that it's been talked a lot about, but never done, is that we are beginning to at least see the possibility of addressing criminal justice reform, which is so sorely needed in the country. Whether that's going to translate into tackling things like uh, prison conditions, I don't know, but at least we're having the conversation now in a way we haven't in a long time. Um, let's see, uh, beyond that, I think it's kind of him and Republicans have kind of punted on something like health care. John McCain is no longer with us, but I, I see him. Years, like, still don't have a plan. So yeah, I agree. They should have had a plan. They should have had something ready to go. Do you agree with Lauren that the Great White Hope is making America great again? Uh, no, I, I do, do you not. disagree with anything she just said? I don't disagree with uh, anything that she said per se. So I if you don't agree, disagree with me that you with. agree that the president is making America great again, right? No, because if we want to talk about th things like unemployment rates, I mean, there was already a trajectory. Things were already happening in the country eight years prior to President Trump. Oh, you've been listening so to that liar. It's, it's not a lie. You've been listening to the, you can, the you fall can of Messiah. You can actually do some homework. No. And Before look at Trump, people, there were part-time jobs. The end of the jobs. Bush administration. People had to work two part-time jobs for a full-time job. It was a mess. Right, it, because guess what? Because capitalism isn't working for everyone. But it's not true Because capitalism isn't working. The principles of those free market it. and trickle-down has not built a, 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 a middle class in America. What? Isn't that what we're all Obama? fighting for? You mean it's for Obama? more people in the population to be doing better? Isn't yes. that what all the arguments and, and debates are about? And that's what this president is doing, unlike Barack but Obama. But he's not, because... Lauren, do you agree that there Obama is not a thriving going middle class. history as the worst president that this country has ever had? I mean, there are presidents who put Japanese Americans in internment camps, so that's... <laughs> I, I didn't support a lot These of what Obama did, but yeah, like. I, I wouldn't say that he's the the worst ever. Who? <laughs> I mean, Americans were put into internment camps under other presidents. Uh, so you don't agree that Barack he's not the Obama, worst thing the ever. The fallen Messiah is the worst president <laughs> overall. I also wouldn't say he's the fallen Messiah. Been. No, he's not the worst overall. I don't I don't support him, but he's not the worst. So if Obama overall. is the fallen Messiah, then that makes Trump what? The rising Messiah? Yes. The, the great white hope. The Antichrist then? No, the great white hope. No, because any man that, and the Bible says it would be a politician. Are we out of time? Oh yeah, oh, of course man. we're out of time. Yeah, that was long. Yeah, it's too real for you, right? That went by too fast. You are, I'm really like, uh, wow. You had fun. Let me ask, did you have fun? Like, I just really want to know, did do you, you really believe fun? the stuff that you say? Did you have or fun? Or is it just for entertainment? Answer my final question. Can you answer my question? Yeah, you I haven't answered. Answer. You haven't answered. You keep saying what's that, but question? you never end up answering. Uh, what's your question? Do you really believe the stuff that you say? 100%. What, like, what was your, can you just give me a little context? Where did you grow up? Like, what, 
who, we, who raised you? <laughs> I'm serious, that's a very serious question. I'm very uh, curious. I, I, I grew up in Alabama. My family's from Birmingham. I grew up under the uh, Jim, Jim Crow, Crow laws. I've heard you say that. Uh, color signs only, white signs only. I was raised pretty much by my grandparents, my grandfather and grandmother. Did they hate uh, black people as much as you do? As a matter of fact, black people loved one another then. They don't love each other today. I would agree that black people the state more, of the black they have yeah, character, I, I, their family was tight, or I agree with was you on unheard that. of. Black people were decent people. They didn't hate white people. And, and you, so they were decent That's no longer people. the case. No, that's gone now. And that's why you Across people are the board. suffering. You people are suffering not because what of racism. What do you mean? Are you, are you, I've heard you say you're not black, so what are you? Well, I'm black on the outside, but, but white on the inside. Okay. So you, you got, you so people then you, are suffering due to the lack of, the distrust of the family and the lack of more character and not this phony so idea by of you, racism. So by you making that statement, then are you saying that your Lord and Savior and your God that put you on this earth made a mistake by making, putting you in black skin? No, he made me white on the inside. Like he might have made somebody male or female on the inside, but the opposite that's not externally? The same thing. How is it not? Listen, that's not the same thing. But I got to ask you this because I'm out of time. Did you have fun? I had a great time. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Did you have fun? I had fun, yeah. Right. Thank you for coming. Spicy morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, it's follow, nice to tweet, you. subscribe. You're fantastic. Thank you, you too. I'm so glad you uh, came. Share, comment and all of that good stuff. We have all kinds of products on the Fall Estate merchandise, so be sure to support it. Every dime goes back into what we're doing. Thank you so much. Next time on The Fallen State. What is the purpose of the Black, Black, uh, Black Student Union at Antelope Valley College? We are at a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution. The students are not predominantly white. The majority of the students are Hispanic. It's like 65%. But the faculty and staff are like all white. We want to make sure that we are heard. Heard in what way? And by whom? Needs. I would say needs. And what are the needs? Uh. The end goal is for all of us, blacks, white, Mexican, all that, to be right here. I've noticed that most black men, young and old, are beta males. Beta! First of all, I didn't even want to go to college, <laughs> if we being honest. You did not want to go to college? Oh, no. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.